Hi, this is Richard Hughes, the superintendent for Frontier Central School. This short video will go over the particulars of a proposed multi-use field project at the high school. The vote is on September 27th, 2018 from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. at the Town of Hamburg Senior Center. So let's dive into this a little bit. Um, the first thing we'll show is a flyover of the proposed field. Um, the, the track is currently planned to be constructed and redone in 2020. Um, the field, if passed by the residents of uh, the Frontier School District, would also be done in 2020. Um, as you can see, there's a number of lines. This is not just a football field as outlined by the white, but as you can see from the yellow, this is also a soccer field. And in the white and in these goal areas, this is outlined for lacrosse as well. So it truly is a multi-use field. Um, Lauren Dietz, Lawrence Dietz Field is uh, the main field for our athletics. You can see the high school behind here there, along with the practice field behind it. Um, we need a, a few upgrades and um, we'll dive into why um, the board by unanimous vote um, is passing this on to the voters to vote on. So let's get into some particulars. So let's talk about our current high school athletic fields. Um, if you look at the fall season first, we have three soccer fields at the high school for four teams. That means we have a JV and varsity boys team and a JV and varsity girls team. We have one football field for two teams, a JV and varsity. We have one football practice field, but that practice field is used by other teams as well as our uh, physical education department right behind the high school. If you take into account all the athletes that we have at the high school level during the fall, and divided by the number of students in 9 through 12, about 10% of our kids, right here, the 10.8% of our high school students participate in a fall sport that would be impacted by these fields. When you include the modified, which are our seventh and eighth graders uh, for the most part, and divide that by the number of students 7 12, the percentage of fall students um, that are affected is 12.2. So some of the issues we have. Currently, we have three fields, so all the boys' and girls' home games can't be scheduled at the same time. Somebody's got to be away, to, you know, two teams have to be away and two have to be at home. All teams must share a field, so the more you share a field, the more, especially with grass, uh, the more wear and tear you see. And that, in turn, decreases the longevity of the fields. But let's look at the spring season. So most people will think of a multi-use field as, as basically benefiting football. That couldn't be further from the truth. This is going to benefit all of our teams. Uh, we have three lacrosse fields for four teams. Those are the same fields used by our soccer program. Again, JV and varsity boys and girls so for four there. We have one baseball field for two of our teams. We have two softball fields for our, our JV and varsity team, uh, one right behind the high school and one behind Big Tree. And then if we look at participation, we have a lot of kids that participate in the spring sports. 18.8% um, of our high school population uh, participates in a fall sport, I mean a spring sport, excuse me. And then 20.8% of our students, when you count the modify the seventh or eighth graders, um, participate in a spring sport. So the issues are basically the same, um, but with boys and girls lacrosse, the home games, we can't play them at the same time. Same thing as, uh, as soccer. Lacrosse teams have to share a field all season long. Uh, lacrosse wears out the midfield and goal areas, uh, you know, they're concentrated around the goals because they're trying to score and they're just there's a lot more cleats and a lot more foot traffic there so it wears them out especially with a the goalie there and because of those issues again longevity of the fields is greatly decreased so we do have some community impact items um first off the lawrence deets field um, isn't be isn't able to be used by our community groups during the summer because we're preparing we're repairing um, and letting the grass grow and such the the spring wear that we see from our lacrosse and, and, and other sports. Um, the availability of fields during the spring and summer is greatly lessened due to the wear and overuse. That goes back to not just the community use of it, but also our own student population. Um, programs like Little Loop, um, they have to use St. Francis as turf field playoffs uh, due to the conditions of our, our football field. Um, it would be great for our students, especially Little Loop and such, to use our facilities um, at no cost. Um, St. Francis uses this kind of as a recruiting tool. Um, so when students who are experienced uh, get a chance to experience it at the younger ages, um, in eighth grade, they have to just, they end up deciding what they want to do as a freshman. 
and many of the students do, a uh, number of our students do select St. Francis to go to school because of their facilities. So let's talk about some benefits. First off, if we have a multi-use turf field in the stadium, um, it would provide four fields in the fall for four soccer teams. So we could rotate which of the teams, boys and girls, varsity, JV, are playing on the turf field. It probably mostly uh, for soccer would be used by our varsity teams, but we would rotate um, who's able to use those. Currently, all Section 6 playoff games, whether it's quarterfinal, semifinal, final games, are all played on turf. Uh, our teams are put at a competitive disadvantage because, because of that. They don't get a chance to play on any turf fields unless they're at a away game. Again, we could host community little loop playoff games and possibly Hamburg Monarch soccer games. So we could become more of a hub to hosting not only our own school events uh, where our Falcons play, but also uh, community events. There are some safety concerns um, with the wear and tear that our, our main, uh, the Dees field has seen over the years. We do our best to repair as much as possible, but uh, you know we can minimize you know, those safety concerns so that it's not the field being an issue um it's it's more you know just the regular rigors of playing an athletic contest a few more in the spring uh we could accommodate all four soccer uh, excuse me all four lacrosse teams just as we talked about the soccer we could stagger practices they could all be on this field soccer could be as well you know we could stagger practices over those hours from you know 2 30 to 8 30 even um and all across those three fields Baseball and softball teams right now, our baseball and softball teams um, are not going to have a turf field, but this main turf field could be used for practices outside. So, so what does that really mean? Well, for example, this past year, Clarence was outside 15 times practicing on turf before the first game. They're out there to throw, doing infield practice and things like that. Our athletes were in gyms because of uh, the water and snow and everything else that we had. Um, the grounds were just too wet to do so. Um, a turf field drains greatly um, and it's easier to, to maintain. Track and field. So when we have a game that is on Dietz Field, our track and field currently can't practice around that. So when lacrosse is playing um, with the, with the uh, multi-use field, we could, it would have the proper netting installed as well to uh, allow you know track practice to occur while lacrosse is practicing. So let's look at the cost because cost is always a consideration. Um, you know we want to provide the best for our students, but at the same time um, take into account um, our taxpayers and our, and our residents. So the multi-purpose turf fields cost a little over 1.8 million. Um, that is a good size number, but that number does not include a concession stand, does include bathrooms, a scoreboard. If you go to other uh, stadiums, you know, where Waynesville that has a uh, multi-purpose uh, turf there, they have these huge digital scoreboards. Those are not included in this project. We're just focusing on the field itself. Construction, including in contingency for, you know, any issues that may be found and during all the site work is a little over 1.4 million. Incidentals and escalation, we do have inflation issues that do occur since the turf would not be installed into 2020. There is a chance for inflation there that would end up be another 349,000. So that gets us to the 1.8 million. This project is 75% state aidable. Um, that includes any borrowing costs. You, we get aid at a 75% rate when we borrow money when it's um, for capital projects. So it's not just if we borrow 1.8 million, we also have to borrow uh, to pay for the pay the interest on the principal. The state also reimburses us um, that same state aid ratio. So only 25% of this field is locally funded. So over 16 years annually, it turns out to be a 0.1% tax increase um, each year for 16 years. And once it's raised at 0.1%, it just stays on the levy um, for those 16 years. When it comes down to it, uh, we talked to our local assessors and uh, the town of Hamburg, and they said an average uh, family home within the district is assessed at 99,000. So an average, assessed family home at 100,000 ends up being a 3% a $3 tax increase. So for every 1,000 it is a is a 3 cent tax increase. So we're looking at uh, you know $3 for for a typical family home within um, the Frontier School District. 
So some questions that we've heard, and I'm sure there may be more out there. And if you do have questions, please don't hesitate to, to contact the district office or email me at rhughes at frontiercsd.org. Um, but a few questions that we have heard, how many events does the current field host versus how many could it host? Well, currently we, we maybe have two games on in a week and that's if the weather has been good. Um, if it's really rainy and, and wet, you know, one game alone can turn it into um, a mud pit, to say the least. It tears it up pretty good. But future, because, it, because turf fields drain so well, we can hold up to three events per day. It could be raining hard. Um, as soon as the rain stops, we could be out on it in a heartbeat. Um, another question that comes up is, you know, does this increase the cost to the district? Actually, multi-purpose fields generally decrease your maintenance costs. You still have to do things like picking up garbage and um, and groom it, um, but the deep grooming that's needed to kind of loosen up all the uh, the rubber pellets that are in there is only really needed once a year. And that can cost out, you know, between $2,500 to $3,500, depending on the side of the field. We're probably at the lower end, the $2,500 range. Um, how long does a multi-purpose field last? Well, they generally last 15 to 20 years. Um, a replacement, when you had to replace the field, you just replace the top. So the 1.8 million includes the drainage, the underneath, the sand base, all those other pieces to be able to put it in. And since we're doing the track um, in 2020 as it is resurfacing the track, this would be the best time to, if we're ever going to do a turf field, this would be the best time to do so. So a replacement cost about 600000 for the top surface. Again, we talk about that 75% aidable from the state level. If we're not getting the aid, somebody else is. So, you know, prior to financing, you look at $150,000 um, for replacement. So what we could easily do to cover the financing and, and the replacement, the, the local portion, we could put $15,000 away a year, and that would cover... Um, over 15 years, that's $225,000. Um, that would easily cover any replacement in the future. So once we make this first investment, um, we can financially be smart enough uh, to you know, put a little bit of money away, 15000 a year, to cover any future replacement costs. So the vote, as I said early, at the beginning of this presentation, is on September 27th. Um, flyers and information that relates to this, it has been posted in the community ed flyer. We are hold, holding a uh, hearing uh, prior to the board meeting on the 18th, nine days before the vote. Um, if you have questions, concerns, please reach out. Um, I'm willing to meet with anybody anywhere, anytime to talk about this and uh, just want to make sure the information, the correct information is out there. So please, if you have a question or if you heard you know, a rumor, please reach out and uh, we'll get you the information you need. So overall, um, thank you for your time and please feel free to share this video and its, its contents. Hopefully we have a large turnout on the 27th and um, thank you and go Falcons.